coming. Let's do it. Uh, no bands coming in. Uh, first band does go to El Nexo. And we had uh, the same bands in all uh, in all previous games for them. Uh, no, we had one. We had one after different. after the first game. You're right. Yeah. After the first game. After so? the first game, they were always band stitches. I guess uh, it's the first band by El Nexo. And let's see what over nine thousand is going to choose here. If they know El Nexo, they're probably going to go for Abathur. Quite likely, yes. <laughs> Because uh, Lucifron's Abathur is pretty good, and we could see Well Met reacting to that very appropriately. Mm -hmm. But so let's see if over nine thousand are in the same position. They have had some time, so it's very likely that they could have been uh, popping in. They could have been popping into the stream, having a little spy. <laughs> yeah, downtime does help. This is true. And ooh, they ban Shen. Shen. Also I like a solid choice. choice. Yeah, really yeah, good Shen choice. Super, super good at the moment. And there we go. First pickup is Arthas. Interesting yep. because they didn't choose Arthas in the previous games all that much. So this is maybe something of their more solid lineup for teams that they haven't played against before. I don't Quite know. Possibly. Play uh, I think Arthas, I think they're picking Arthas purely because uh, Chen was banned out, so they need to go for another solid warrior, and mm -hmm. Arthas is definitely considered to be uh, the other right. solid warrior. The rest are all <laughs> up and exactly. down. Exactly. You don't want to lose out on, on the warriors early on. Yes. Like what? That's EU meta in general. Warriors are very favoured. Yeah, that's true. So um, that's the first picks coming out for. I'll next uh, for over 9,000 now. Yep. And Tychus is gone. Oh, they're going for Ufus straight away. And there's Vala. Ooh. Okay. I like the Van Vala counterplay. The previous... Vala is... We've seen... I don't think we've seen Vala lose yet. No, we've seen her lose once. Yep. Uh, but Vala was always picked up by El Nexo, so I like that they counterpick her. Yep, this is true. Ooh, Kerrigan and Tessa there. Something new for El Nexo. And we, do, we don't get to see Kerrigan all that often, so uh, I'm liking this quite a bit. Let's see if we're gonna uh, if, if we're gonna have Abathur on their team. Yeah, maybe it wasn't banned, so I wouldn't not be surprised to see it right now. El Nexo's team is very in your face. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they they'd like to have some um, some more ranged heroes in there. Yeah, Tessa's pretty good for range, but he still has to get relatively close for his Archon form. But, yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious what their next few picks would be. Abathur would be quite nice for this, because Abathur on the head of Arthas or Kerrigan is going to be devastating. Also depends on the map. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. We don't, know the, we don't know the map yet. Yeah, we have, <laughs> haven't got the foggiest. Oh, dear. So right now, over 9,000. Getting their next pick. What will it be? 10 seconds left. Um, 11, 10. Someone should suggest it. Grubby on Abathur. <laughs> oh, Stitches. I Grubby like on Abathur would be cool. Stealing that now would be actually quite nice. Yeah, going like for Abathur that. right there. That would still leave him um, like the last pick open just to react to El Nexo. Yep, this is true. Uh, so right now I'm still not sure what El Nexo is going for here. Yeah, it would it would be nice to know the map. I think we need a rule where you actually have to tell the casters the map first. That would be nice. It's the only problem of not doing drafts in lobbies. <laughs> you have no idea what you're doing. What? Nine days. Nine days until beta. Do you know if they actually moved on to give us bans now? In... Not in the slightest. <laughs> There's a huge list of features they said were coming in beta, but maybe they haven't mentioned that any of them are coming with beta. The only thing I think they've actually announced is coming with beta is for all. Okay. What about um, the the new maps? I don't know. There's coming in beta, but maybe not with beta. Nazibo making a return, and that makes me instantly think Cursed Hollow. Hmm. Okay. We, uh, we did get to see him <laughs> in that previous game. 
Stitch's Nazi bow is incredible. Hook into zombie wall is amazing. And obviously stealing it so that you can't get your Nazi bow hooked yourself. Right now, the only interrupt for Nazi bow is Kerrigan. And they've also... And Tychus is banned. So it's going to be quite hard to hit from range. They need to pick, pull out someone with a more of a long range stun. Kerrigan has two ways to deal with it though. So that is useful for them. All right. So, what will El Nexo's reaction be to this? Give me a sec. Get the draft back up. Okay. Well, Brightwing for El Nexo is their next pick. They have one last pick. Hmm. And Brightwing is a good pick because due to the polymorph. And it seems it's El Nexo playing Brightwing against the Nazi bow. I think they're more likely to go for the NA style and take Emerald Wind. Yep. Purely for the interrupt. And also, Emerald Wind versus Ufa with Divine Storm is actually just beastly. <laughs> Ufa uses Sprint. Brightwing uses Divine nope. Storm. Does Not on my watch. Ufa! Yes. This is nice. I'm liking these comps already from both sides. They're looking very interesting. Oh. Yep, we will get to see Abatha. Yeah, well, chat, you Finally. got what you want. Lucifer yep. <laughs> Lucifer's on Abatha. Finally, you guys get your <laughs> get your wish. <laughs> so, w w what is the last pick here for over nine thousand? What uh, would be a smart choice? Any second warrior. So yeah. anyone who can tank and basically protect Nazibo. So. Uh, ETC maybe <laughs> no not ETC um, I don't know I expect a new Barak, probably or, kind of. or he doesn't maybe really... Illidan yeah, but a new Barak doesn't really help all that much with Arthas and Kerrigan he slows them down that's yeah. the thing like my personal opinion but it won't be picked is Diablo because <laughs> Kerrigan's gonna what's Kerrigan gonna try and do she's gonna be trying to get to that back line what can Ar Diablo prevent Picking her up and throw her and then tackle her away from your backline. Yep. It's actually yep. really good disengage. Same with ETC. You can sort of dash through her and push her back. But it's going to be Zeratul as Ooh. the final pickup. Bit more focused. This is a very El Nexo game one of that last series style. Yeah. Definitely. Um, looks kind of looks like El Nexo versus El Nexo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So. We will wait for the lobby to come up and then we will join and then I'm going to have to run use facilities and I'll be back in time for game load. Yeah, it does look a little bit like... Um... Oh wait, actually I don't have any of these players on my friends list. I so... have Grubby, I am joining off Grubby, join off me. Okay. I also have Alistair, so I'm fine for both. Okay, I'm going to run uh, Lou now and I'll be back in time. Be right back. Yeah, so this... Uh, the composition by over 9,000 looks a little bit volatile, um, but then again, El Nexo, they also have only have one straight up assassin and one semi assassin with Tacitor. And then Abathur is kind of uh, all over the place, depending on where he goes with his uh, heroic, who he actually um, who actually copies. So in the early game, I gotta give it to over 9,000, and there's also the El Nexo vulnerability in the early game, where they always kind of um, just don't play uh, as well in the early game. But uh, we'll have to see where it goes from there. Uh, once once they do hit level, hit level 10, Abathur is there, um, but then again we also get the uh, Void Prism and uh, the Ravenous Spirit. Alright, so it looks like everyone's in here. Almost everyone's in there. Alistair's pending. But yeah, it does look kind of interesting. Um, I'm curious to see um, who Abathur will actually copy here. If Tesla is going for a straight on assassin, um, or like massive, uh, massive damage build, it's probably going to be Tesla, but you could also go for Kerrigan to get a little bit more CC in. I am back. So, um, who do you think Abathur is going to copy? Um, there's definitely going to be situational. Um, Arthas is a very, very nice pick in terms of copy. Wait, which team has Arthas? It's El Nexo. Okay, yeah, Arthas is a very nice pick because it gives them the double warrior. Kerrigan would also be nice. I think double Brightwing would be funny. 
I'll say that much. Just double Brightwing, just hang near Arthas to passively heal him over and over again. <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm expecting Arthas or Kerrigan mostly. I think Valor's got enough damage on her own. But you might see a Valor now and again, but I think you need the CCs and the stuns out of Kerrigan and the tankiness of Arthas first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to suggest Kerrigan and possibly Tassadar. Alright, so almost everyone's ready. Oh yeah, they have ta oh yeah, they have Tastar instead of Valor. I was looking I was just looking at the screen and I w <laughs> uh, where Alistair was hovering over Valor. Oops. So yeah, Kerrigan or Kerrigan or Arthas, maybe Tassadar if the uh, if they have enough time to wait for the uh, ta yeah, the Archon. <laughs> I forgot how to talk for a second there. Yeah, happens from time to time. <laughs> but over 9,000 uh, has a lot stronger early game, it looks like. Um, I think they're going to be better, a little bit better off in the early game. They also have the element of surprise, due to the fact that I know I personally have not seen them play. <laughs> that does help out quite a bit. Yeah. And they're already in the semi-finals. If they can win this match, they've got their spot, and if not, there's still three more qualifiers to go. Yeah, and this is a best of five, so they have a couple of goes at it. Yeah, <laughs> and they're starting on by far El Nexo's best map. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be the first match of the semi-finals winner of, well, I guess it's technically a final because it's winning the prize of qualifying of the Heroes Premier League Season 2 qualifier. And it's going to be El Nexo versus Over 9000. And over 9,000 um, to get here, they had to beat the Fallen Superheroes. Um, won one, uh, at least one game versus Team Alternate. And after that, Team Alternate had to forfeit because they had way too many lag spikes. But here we are. This is it. First map of this best of five in the semi-final. And on the left side, our blue team, Team Grubby, it's actually Team Over 9000 with Grubby on Uther, Antisocial is playing Nazebo, Cassandra is playing Stitches, Yellow Flash Battle is here on Zeratul, and there is Darko Micron on Vela. And on the right hand side, in the red trunks, it is likely going to be the crowd expected to win favorite. It is El Nexo, and we have LOL vs XD on the Kerrigan. Lucifron, not on the Abatha, is playing the Arthas. Alistair is on the Tassadar. Grand PKT on the Brightwing. And on the Abatha, we have Vortex. And we're about to see Cassandra maybe make a horrible mistake, but no, he's going to back up. There's the Oracle, and that's going to dissuade over 9,000 from really getting involved. <laughs> yeah, Oracle really helping out quite a bit there. And clearing the way always helps out if you see, okay, oh, someone hiding in the bushes. Oh, better stay back. Yep, it is very nice. And it also works the other way around. Due to the fact that you have a red eye above your head when you have been seen by Oracle, it's a very good uh, just anti-attack anti thing. Just like, oh, we've been spotted. We should probably back up. We do not want to get ganked. Yeah, there comes some rotation. Deterrent. Uh, rotation on the top lane. But looks like... Team over 9,000 retreated back to safety. Yep, I hope you are prepared, as I am, to, if over 9,000 win a team fight in a convincing manner, to do the reference. <laughs> of course. Of Excellent. Course. Excellent. Alright, so Vortex currently just using Abifer to clear this bottom lane. Whereas in the top lane, oh, Robbie, Robbie has he's taking a lot of damage. He's in the zombie ball. He can't heal himself. He goes down. First blood over to El Nexo, but second blood. Instantly going back to over 9,000, picking off Ufa. One for one. <laughs> nice trade, job here. Trade. Yeah, but a great zombie wall here. Um, good zombie wall followed by good hook. <laughs> great zombie wall getting his, his teammate. own teammate. <laughs> his name is Nazibo and he's helping. It's a video I will be releasing in... What's the time? 22? In about an hour, in about an hour and 20 minutes. What will happen? Uh, I will be releasing uh, my video, which is Team Help. <laughs> With, oh, but here we go, Antisocial being engaged upon here. He's able to back up. Grubby heals himself. Cassandra coming out of the mine. Surprise attack. Oh, Lucifron is caught out of position. He's completely Ingram's body blocked on the left side. But Lola 16 comes in there. Stitches goes down. And with that, they need to back off. 
The L Nexo Mind Micro there. Very nice. Seriously helped them out there. Cassandra got picked off. And they will be. And now El Nexo will begin clearing the mines. In comes over 9,000. Looking for an opportunity for revenge. Alistair has been engaged one, but he has Abafa on his head and is able to take this quite nicely. Stitch is on the way to rejoin Grubby. Dodging the stun. There's the zombie wall to Lord versus XD. They're going to try and take him down very, very quickly. Grubby gets rooted, though, and he will go down. He's now in ghost form. Kerrigan goes down as well. Yellow Flash having to run for his life. He gets taken down by Lucifron. Antisocial giving chase to Lucifron, but Lucifron's going to be able to get out unless the stun can land. Uh, no, it can't. And now we are seeing Alistair being chased by Darker, Mi Darker Micron, but he cannot catch him. But here comes Cassandra. Oh, Cassandra comes in there, antisocial as well, but nope, there's the shield, oh, and the still staying alive. Wow. Yeah, you could actually back through the zombie wall if she was inside it, but because Stitch is hooked to the other side, then you had to go all the way around in order to get into a position where it could get out of the mines. Very nice play there, very good positioning of that zombie wall to cancel them getting out of the mines. But I gotta say, this is a little bit of uh, disarray down here in the mines. Uh, teams always coming in from two sides. Yeah, kind of chaos. hard to just. Yeah, it's chaos. It's kind of hard to judge <laughs> when to back off on the fight. Which, like right now, Low vs. XD needs to get out, but Abathur oh, is on his back. Oh, nice body block here. Low vs. XD should not make it. And there's Lucifer also taking a lot of damage. He takes down Darko Micron, though. Yellow Flash going in from the other side. In comes Alistair from the back, healing Lucifron. Down goes Lucifron. Antisocial is about to bite the dust. Heals, but I don't think it's enough. Down he goes. Wow. And then now seeing Cassandra and Yellow Flash chasing up to Grand PKT. Cassandra being dropped very low. Needs to devour and does devour to get some health back. There's the hook up to Grand PKT. Shield coming out. And Amethyst there as well takes down Stitches. And now it is nice Grubby storm. running for his life from Alistair. But in comes Yellow Flash thinking about engaging from the back. But no, Yellow Flash is just going to back out of those mines and go get some health. Darker Micron also having to escape. Grubby oh, is still Grubby's in running. trouble. Grubby's he's in trouble. Gone, he's gone. There comes the grasp and <laughs> down he goes. Yeah, yeah. excellent move here. <laughs> Over 9,000. Um, getting a little bit uh, yeah, out of position here in the mines. But it was kind of hard to get the overview. Yeah, this is true. It's just, it's just chaos happening in the mines at the moment. Huge, massive disarray. Which is the word I'm so glad you used. I'm a huge fan of it. Right now, we're seeing El Nexo finally starting on that golem, and that does give them the skull advantage. But in comes over 9,000 again onto Loser from Nice Zombie will really separate out El Nexo, but Cassandra once again just being wiped out. One of the tankiest characters in the game being decimated there, and we're seeing. Over 9,000 having to back out, but there goes Antisocial, and that was not a good fight for Over 9,000. They were caught out very badly there, and it's only 50 skulls for El Nexo. If Over 9,000 can kill them here, they can uh, actually tie up the mines, but I don't think it's going to happen. We're seeing Yellow Flash doing oh, as much damage incredibly as low, but right now it's still four against three. All these skulls so pick up one skull and they won the mines. There we go. Finally on 51. They, <laughs> they have now physically won the mines, no matter what happens. But the fight continues. We're seeing both members of Over 9000, the two that ran away, are now entering the mines. And they'll next, though, they're like, okay, we're 51, we're done here, we're out. I'm a little bit surprised <laughs> that they actually backed off. But well, this first like golem. The other two members were just arriving. They would have had to fight five versus, well, four and a bit. Yeah, that's true, that's true. And yep, now so they, they, did, they did have Abathur pushing in the top lane all the while this was going on. And he did a solid job here. Uh, the walls are gone, towers are gone. And the fort already taking damage, depleting a lot of ammo. So this was uh, definitely a good job uh, by Abathur. Yep, Abathur has been doing what Abathur does and is just taking everything at the moment. And we're going to be seeing over 9,000 beginning to take their easy camp. They will not cap it, however. Uh, yes, they will. will. Okay, that's interesting. interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Capping it that early means it yeah. won't be prepared to help defend against that golem. So it's yeah, going to be. They will actually massively. march beyond the walls. Well, they don't have a wall anymore. It might so even it doesn't die really... if they're not careful here. And as we can see, El Nexo playing it much safer, just standing yeah. right next to theirs. They're just going to chill and wait for the golem to be about halfway once it passes the actual mine. Nope. Uh, we're actually going to see uh, Lucifer grab it now. Uh, yeah, that's timed pretty well. So that will get there in time. But as we can see, yeah, the, the sea, sea shines giants, for over 9,000, just all out in the open, totally exposed, yeah, will get down, taken out. And that's all that extra damage completely gone. And yeah. that's such a risky move. That I don't, they had no reason to do that. Yep. Yeah. So kids, if you're watching this, just grab your sea shines when the golem is halfway. 
Yeah, or just under halfway. As we saw El Nexo time that perfectly. I, I time that a bit badly. Lucifron gets hooked in, but is able to back out back to his ultimate. He is healing himself. Ultimates, as we just pointed out, are available for El Nexo, and they are using them. Grubby has been rooted. The Maelstrom has already used up, but Grubby does go down. El Nexo continuing to push there now. Anti-social nice anti -social anti -social completely There's out of healed. position there. He has been healed. He's back up. He's trying to micro, but he gets rooted by the golem. But down goes Kerrigan. And over 9,000 uses this to their advantage. They get two members. That's a two for two trade. Surprisingly good. And they get the golem before their fort goes down. They're now going on to Grand PKT. Darko Micron <laughs> is dropping very low. Stitches did go down. Alistair has altered. Yellowfish able to blink away. Darko Micron will also oh. not be able to escape. Gets taken down by Abatha. And, and that that's the fort. Will finally be a fort down. I was kind of surprised that uh, over 9,000 actually got that two for two. But then they overextended a little bit. Wanted Brightwing a little bit too badly. And see these Siege Giants for um, for El Nexo? They're still going at it. Actually, might get that top four. Yes, they these will. The, these are the ones wow. that killed the Golem. These Siege yeah. Giants, MVP, they killed the Golem and then went all the way along the lane, killed that fort, and they're still going. They're actually killing Grubby at this point. There we go. <laughs> Finally dealing with it. By the way, we have a slam build on Stitches. We have uh, the uh, multi-shot build on Valor. Yep, pretty standard builds. Storms <laughs> on Tassadar. And yeah, that's about as much as I can put out. There's the Venom on both Arthas and Kerrigan, interestingly. Yep. On Kerrigan, though, one of the talents that I'd like to point out most is the talent adaptation, her level 7 talent. And that is good. It allows her to jump to allies for half the cooldown. And mm. against this comp with a Stitches is a very good talent to take. She can yeah, get nice, hooked and then nice life saver. to an ally. It is a life-saving talent. Yeah. Uh, great lifesaver. Uh, we have not seen it used yet, have we? Uh, if we did, I wasn't paying enough attention to notice. <laughs> I will yeah, be. Too honest. much stuff going on. Yep. Um, Abathur is going for eradicate minions, doing a little bit more burst damage versus non heroics. Then uh, the symbiote stab, uh, damage increase, and mules, of course. Yeah, to... mule is good. Mule yeah. has been used. We can notice that pretty much everything they own is at full or just below full health. Oh my god, here comes El Nexo looking to try and trap people who have just entered the mines. Yellow Flash able to escape, but now, how on earth are over 9,000 going to enter the mines? Yeah, we already have a concave set up here by El Nexo. Uh, yep, they're actually back enough. They have to go in together at once and then Divine Storm. <laughs> here they go. Going straight into the mines and they're going into it. Hook misses from Cassandra and they're looking for the engagement here. Dark, Dark Minion has been rooted. There goes the zombie wall. They're looking for their moment. Grubby running in. There's the Divine Storm. Where is the Divine Storm? And we're going to see Antisocial killing everyone here. Doing so much damage. In comes all that 16. Gonna cancel that with the pullback. Antisocial goes down and El Nexo turning that heavily on its wow, head. Nice micro from 60, jumping out of the mines and then back in. Yeah, that, that was an excellent practice. move by him. Um, just jumping out, jumping back in once he uh, had his um, once he had his skill to be back up. Excellent move. Um, and that's another ace here for El yeah. Nexo. Like you said, the concave was huge from El Nexo. They got good angles, they were separated out enough that the Ravenous Spirit did not just destroy them where they stood. And Kerrigan, the only one who was really in danger of dying. Well, never mind. Oh no, that was a clone. I was about to say Tassadar died, but that was a clone. So Kerrigan, the only one in danger of dying, really, was able to micro her way out of that situation. Very, very nice. This might actually be game already. That's a 92 skull golem, and El Nexo is almost four levels ahead. Uh, three levels ahead. Yep, this, this is, is pretty is, massive already. This is classic El Nexo play. Yep. They usually do win by second go by second golem or just after second golem and they go in and just finish the job. Yep, that is this is their best map. To eight. That is huge. Yep, it is their best map and they're going to be grabbing their siege giants straight away because this at this point the golems are already where they need to be for the giants to help defend against it. But as we can see, siege giants have also been taken by uh, have also been taken by over 9,000 and they're not doing anything. Yeah, uh, just going down there. We'll be taken out here by a Grand PKT, maybe, already. But no, El Nexo going straight for bolstering their boss. And it's already taken out one tower. Yep, someone pointing out once, uh, Chinese, someone saying once Chinese and Korean players play this game, they already do. 
there's already a, Kore a Korean and a Chinese scene. So uh, yeah, there's a great article uh, by Wolf on Team Liquid uh, yeah. about the Korean scene. So if you're interested in that, uh, just check it out. Yeah, it looks very good. But right now, we are seeing the Spanish dominating here. Cassandra back it up again. Robbie gets taken out. The, the ancestral, the rabbit of spirit, did nothing. Was cancelled by Polymorph instantly. Cassandra That's a four-level advantage right now. Office. They're just gonna stomp this. Lucifer just stays alive forever. Wow, antisocial is going down. Darko Micron, can he escape? Does look like it, but Yellow it's Flash, he's flash. in trouble. Run Flash, he's not going for it. And now it's going to be the Golem, which is on about a quarter of its health. It's just going to start wailing on this. And we're going to see El Nexo crush through this and take the first game in this best of five series, just harassing uh, the members of over 9000 as they try to get some damage off. The Golem itself could probably end the game as long as El Nexo can keep the, uh, the members of Over 9000 off it, but it doesn't matter. They are all here and they will take this down. And El Nexo takes game number wow. one. 1 0 for El Nexo. Uh, this kind of looked like a walkover. Um, but this is El Nexo no on this map. Exactly. This is El Nexo on this map. Make no mistake, I think Over 9000 definitely um, has a chance against them. But this is just their best map. Um, they got to, got to play the way they want to play this. And um, yeah, I think we're gonna see an Abathur, um, Abathur ban on the uh, on the next one. I think you might be right. <laughs> oh dear, but yeah, that was interesting. Giving El Nexo one of their best heroes on one of on their best map is a bit of a an iffy decision. Wow. <laughs> Okay, by the way, if you tweet something with over 9,000 in your um, in your tweet on Twitter, um, someone uh, by the name of Napa is going to answer you, What? 9,000? Are you aware of the reference there? or uh, <laughs> Like, I know I know the reference, reference in general, but I don't know, like, they're, like, the whole conversation thing. Napa is the guy who says, Vegeta, what's the scout to say about his power level? Ah, okay. Vegeta replies with over 9,000, and Napa replies with exactly, what, 9,000? <laughs> <laughs> uh. There is no way that can be right. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, takedowns, 21 to 7. Yeah, that was... Yeah, <laughs> I don't have any words for that. That was pretty deadly. So, we're going to wait for the next draft to come up. And then we'll be getting into that and get into game number two as soon as possible. So, now that that map is over, now we get on to all the other maps and give the over 9,000 a chance. We've got the Ruffle Stomp out the way, and it's nine, now time for 9,000 to get back into this. Yeah, good thing this is the best of five. Um, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, do you know how exactly the map choice is going to work? Nope. Not in the slightest. I'm assuming they vetoed down to one and then loser picks. It's my best guess. Okay. Um, maybe there's something in the rules. I have to check. Uh, there probably is. I just haven't looked at it. Uh, give me a sec. Uh, Even when I play, map choice is very rarely my decision. <laughs> I saw, I simply tell them I'm bad at, I'm bad at Black Hearts Bay and then let them work around that. <laughs> That's all I really do. Alright, so... Oh, it's actually pre-picked. Haunted Mines is the first map, then it's Dragonshire, then it's Blackheart's Bay, then it's Cursed Hollow, and the final map is going to be Garden of Terror. So this worked into uh, El Nexo's hands quite nicely here. Okay, so next is uh, Dragonshire. Dragonshire might not be as bad. Yeah, I think I can deal with that. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look when we, you know, get a draft link. Eventually. There is no lobby. Oh, there is a lobby. Is there a lobby? Yes. I'll have to add someone, finally. You have me. <laughs> you don't need to add anyone. Uh, I want to. Yeah, true. Do what I did. Just add everyone and see who replies. Like, I, I had Alistair and I completely forgot who he played for. And I removed him to make room for someone from, I think, barely online. And then I got back, <laughs> then I got back in. I had to cast this, I think. So, yeah. So, yeah, I've re-added him. So that is all good. 
So can we get a draft link eventually? Did you ask yet? Nope, I'm just poking grubbing now. Or are you doing it? I'm just posting in, in lobby chat. Okay, that'll do. They'll read that. Oh, fun fact. Real light HP? Uh, over 9,000 is actually a mistranslation. It's actually over 8,000. This is true. Uh, 8,000 in the manga. Okay. Interesting. Today I learned. Today. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Just watch Dragon Ball Z, man. <laughs> you'll get it. you'll get so many references that you see almost every day. Really? Is it that much? Um actually I think I watched a, like maybe half half season or a season or so. Yeah, watching the first se the first season or first two seasons will get you through most of it. But no, actually no, I did I didn't watch Dragon Ball Z, I watched the original Dragon Ball. The original Dragon Ball was good, but there's yeah. not as many quotable moments in that. Yeah, unfortunately not, but a lot of funny moments. <laughs> Alright, uh, the draft is up, and we see over 9,000 reacting. I do not have the link. Could you uh, yep, link me? Yep, sure thing. Thank you. Uh, oops, sorry. There we go. Okay, um, so we see a reaction here. Abathur is banned, yep. and El Nexo going for the Stitches ban. Not very, not very surprising. This is almost exactly what we expected. I I was going to say that they need to pick Chen as the first pick. Good job. So we have a couple of Grubby fans in here. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of love for Grubby and for good reason. Grubby is just a fantastic human in general. <laughs> Not a fantastic player. He's a fantastic yeah. human. No, he's he's an incredibly nice guy. I'm, I had the pleasure of meeting him at a couple of uh, StarCraft Two events. Great guy. Oh, El Nexo going for Tychus and Brightwing. They do love their Brightwing and uh, Tychus as Is first this the pick. first time they've had Tychus? I think so, because he was ba either banned or first picked by the other team in all previous occasions. That's Fair right, enough. Cassandra is Grubby's wife. Ah, okay. That's cool. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, over to over 9,000 for their next pick. They have Chen already. So right now they've actually denied El Nexo quite a lot of their heavy hitters in terms of Abatha and Chen. But they, they should go for Valor. To be honest, I think go they should. for Valor. It's Dragonshire, yeah. so yeah, Valor's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I'd, li I'd love to see uh, Valor just as a counter I pick once again. I think Faustad might be more important to get though on this map because you know flying from top to bottom of the map is pretty important. And there it is. That's true. Well, next pick. Well, next so. Let's see. Oh wait, actually, this is no. This is next pick for over nine thousand. Mm. Still go for Vala. <laughs> uh, I mean, Uther is gonna be their final pick. At least that would make sense. Um, yeah, or Rhaegar, but Uther is probably more likely. Um, I don't know, Arthas. I'd say. Deny okay. El Nexo both the good warriors. Well, all that, three of them are stitch spanned. Wow, that that would be pretty nuts. I mean, that also forces your team into a different composition, but still. Yes, yeah, I like it. I like it. That. <laughs> yeah, Someone said Dragon can... Ball GT is the best Dragon Ball. I know they put Kappa, but don't even joke about that, man. <laughs> don't even joke. All right, and it is Valor as the next pick. So they've got two of the prettiest assassins. This does mean El Nexo will be bringing Arthas into their comp. Yeah, they need to go for Arthas right now, otherwise he's still up for grabs for over 9,000. Would be surprised to see anyone else in these uh, next two picks for El Nexo. I would agree. So, um... We're currently waiting for El Nexo. We, we definitely know Arthas. question is who is their second pick. They need second assassin and Tassadar. Is going to fill that void very nicely. Asadar and Arthas. As expected, at least for one of them. What do you think about Tassadar right now? I like him. I think he's in a good place. He's not being overly picked, 
but he's being picked at a relatively decent rate and he's not considered overpowered by anyone. He does a decent amount of damage, has some decent utility. He's quite popular, but like I said before, not overpowered anymore. Oh, interesting. They're going for Ufer as the next one. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's interesting. So they still have one more pick. They need another warrior. So, or, you know, any melee assassin, pseudo Zeratul could be filling in here, Illidan, Kerrigan. Something more, something frontline-y, basically. Yeah. Since people are asking, you're watching the HPL EU qualifier number one, we still have three more qualifiers coming up. And the um, first two teams, basically um, the winners of the semifinals, will make it into uh, the regular season. So the Heroes Premier League Season 2. And that will have a prize pool of 2,500 bucks. So no prize pool yet, but you do get the chance to play. Oh, it's an it's Nazebo. Interesting. That's, the That's a squishy comp. Mm-hmm. Very Especially much so. The ODB team already has uh, Tychus and Brightwing. And there's still the chance of seeing... An the Anubarak is still Anubarak. open as well. Anubarak, and he would be a perfect counter to an Azebo. Yeah, and they can use a second warrior. Tastar can fill the assassin role pretty nicely. Yeah, I think, Anub I think Anubarak is by far the best pick here. Yeah. You could also go for Tyrael, but I think Anubarak a little bit more versatile. Hmm... Mm. How many um, seconds do we have left here? Uh, yeah, I'm annoyed that the timer is a bit. Kerrigan! Kerrigan. Okay, Kerrigan's good as well. We saw uh, El Nexo using Kerrigan very effectively in the last game to you uh, to cancel out some Nazi Mm-hmm. So that's good to see, and those are some pretty nice comps. I think El Nexo just favors their um, little bit more damage-based composition instead of going for all-out sustain. Yeah. All right, uh, we're in the lobby. Looks like all the players are readying up. And the map is again Dragonshire. I think this is the second time we've seen Dragonshire tonight. Uh, yes, yes we have. We saw, Ab we saw it the very first game with Abatha taking the dragon twice. <laughs> Abathur? Yeah. It was a Vortex on Abathur when he deep tunneled in and stole it. Well, he didn't see it, he just grabbed it while his team just distracted everyone. Ah, okay, okay. I didn't actually realize that. <laughs> Alright, so we have all the players in the lobby. They have selected their heroes. So we're just waiting for them to ready up. We currently have 6 out of 10, and then we will be getting underway. That is the ultimate skin on Antisocial for Nazebo, by the way. This is true. Another master skin player. It looks pretty crazy, I gotta say. Yeah, I like it. It's what it's on my list of ones I need to get. <laughs> this is it. Which uh which master skins do you have right now? I have Arthas, Chen, ETC, Sergeant Hammer, and I have level ten on stitches, but I'm short one hundred and fifty gold. But I also have free daily quests to complete, which I was gonna do today, but I forgot I was casting. <laughs> so <laughs> Now I am now I am here. So all I have to do is like complete one of them, and I have stitches as well. And then I'm going to start working on whoever I feel like next. Okay, so you're basically using all your gold for the master skins. Yeah, dirty esports money equals heroes. <laughs> you can't buy master skins with re dirty esports money. So gold goes to them. And when I run out of master skins to buy, I will get the money pig. <laughs> I saw an entire team with a money pig. Mm. That is just I nuts, that. man. It's mental. <laughs> <laughs> just showing off. Yep, so we still only have 6 out of 10 players ready. Okay, uh, Grubby, uh, Grubby has gone to the toilet. Okay, yep. fair enough. Small bathroom break, but more and more players oh, are ready up. up. Okay, so we have 10 out of 10 ready up. Yep, that's so it. So we're just waiting for Grubby to start, I guess. But I guess he said BRB. BRB? So, yeah. I guess we're waiting for Grubby to return from the toilet and then we will get going. 
So, what did you think about over 9000's composition this time? Um... Hmm... I'm it's, iffy with it. Uh, I kind of feel like it's mostly based around the uh, counterpicked heroes. <laughs> Which which was my suggestion, but let's see if they can make it actually make it work and play these heroes because there's not too many mm, really like wombo combo potential in there or anything. But I no, mean, let's, divide, let's divine storm into uh, into ravenous spirit. Yeah, and well, rain of vengeance, ravenous spirit, something like that. Yeah. It's, it's a decent combo, but I just eh. It looks it looks really squishy to be honest. Yeah, it's like Ch Chen is there, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much of a difference he's going to make. There's Falstad as well. You can get Shock and Awe into that combo. They have a pretty decent burst combo if they can catch someone. Yeah, but not that much sustain. And next on the other hand, well, Kerrigan, she doesn't have an escape, but she's still like she has a lot of. Uh, she has a lot of health, can sustain a little bit of damage. And Tassadar, of course, he can always get away. So Alnexo's composition is a little bit more versatile, not not based around these um, um, yeah, crazy, uh, crazy combinations with heroics, but still. Yep. There we go. Okay. Ruby has returned. We are loading into the game. And this is game number two of the best of five series in the HPL Season 2 Qualifier is between El Nexo and over 9,000. Dragonshire is the map. Yep. I'm very excited about this. Now, we have, we've only seen El Nexo play on it once, and they dominated it pretty heavily. <laughs> but that was against mouse control. This is not mouse control. This, on the left-hand side, is over 9,000 and spawning... On the Falstad, we have Darker Microns. On the Valor, we have Yellow Flash. On the Chen, we have Cassandra. And in the bot lane, we have Grubby on the Ufa and Antisocial on the Nazibo. And their opponents in the Red Trunks on the right side are El Nexo, the Spanish team with Lucifer on Arthas, Alistair on Tassadar, Lolvus Sexty on Kerrigan, Vortex on Tychus. And last but not least, Grand PKT on Brightwing. Yep, using the Toothless skin. Very nice to see one of my favorite tints in the game. So, we're going to be seeing both teams playing very, very passively. It's a small map. There's many, many places you can be ganked from. And as such, as we can see, both teams playing very, very safely, not wanting to get caught out at all. Yeah, top lane uh, all taken up by El Nexo. So, Darko Micron, he needs to watch out a little bit here. But they're already rotating down towards middle. Probably wanted to react to those missing heroes in bot lane. Yep, they are missing because, like we said, playing very, very safe. Antisocial, looking to continue, ha looking to continue clearing some of these waves. And there is the Oracle straight away trying to gain some vision, and all the storm immediately dodged. Very nice play by over nine thousand, but. That is a tiny, tiny bit of it. Actually, no, none of the minions died in the mid lane, so Alistair not missing out on any XP there. Very Ooh, nice. Antisocial. The nice grasp here by Null vs. XD. Going straight for Antisocial. And Cassandra is in trouble as well. Can Blood Grubby blood. save her? No! Oh my god. Grubby wow. also gets rooted, but there's no way to catch him. And Double kill El here. So, double first blood, like you said. They're going to grab this bottom shrine. Brightwing, unlikely going to be able to take it on Darker Micron to take the top shrine. But can continue to clear the waves until backup does arrive. And Grubby, already engaged upon, does get pulled in. He's taking a lot of damage from the overdrive, but he will not get caught. There's a zombie wall to see Catalus from if he decided to turn around, but he doesn't. And we're now going to see over 9,000 try and take back control of this bottom shrine. But it's Grubby again, and in comes Vortex to deny it. And he just needs to stand. All Luce needs to do is stand there to give his team time to get a Dragonite. And he oh, does. Very that nice. was such a clutch timing, Grubby. Uh, Grubby could have had that um, could have had that bottom shrine if he would have stand there for maybe less than a second. Quite possibly, it was just short, and Lucifer standing in there with perfect timing just to deny him the shrine with uh, just in time. And now Alistair gonna be taking out this mid lane, doing as much damage as possible. Yeah, we'll see everyone rotating back up here. Oop, there's the kick, and Uther is kicked back. 
That's the second tower already taking a lot of damage. Uh, gates are not quite down yet and Alistair almost popping out of it, so... Still doing a lot of damage, almost getting both of these towers. Yep, and now we're seeing Alistair having to back up because Yellow Flash comes in, but Yellow Flash is caught away from his team because Cassandra gets caught and is taken down. The Zombie Ball trapping Lucifer for a second, but he's just going to chill in this healing ward and get most of his health back. While in the meantime, Vortex is pushing down this bot lane. He's going to wait for some more minions, just making sure he's in range for XP. On the top lane, Brightwing and Falstead are still sort of chilling, just having their own game up here. Yeah, it's a little bit of a late back game for these two. Um, still, I mean, Grand PKT, um, pretty good for him to just keep that top shrine. Um, I feel like Falstead should have the upper hand there. Yep, and uh, Grand PKT actually kills Falstead here. No, not quite. Yep, three. Yep. Nope. <laughs> so close. Tried to be out, didn't get it. Grand PKT gets uh, control of the top lane thanks to Envenom. Good ability, yo. By and the way, triple in Venom on Brightwing, Arthas, and Kerrigan. That so is pretty aggressive. nasty. <laughs> I love it. It's such a good idea. It's so aggressive. And now we're going to see El Nexo pushing it down this bot lane. Nice root hits all three members here. And the healing totem will heal their mercenaries as well. Nice pull in by Kerrigan. Cassandra, though, the root almost saved him, but, uh, saved her, sorry, but the grenade takes them down. Yeah, nice nice uh, storm and grenade combo there. And uh, this might actually be the bottom fort. Oh, anti-social and Grubby oh both God. go down. Wow, El Nexo is seriously on fire right here. Yep, El Nexo is taking down everything. Yellow Flash sort of came down here for a second. Had a quick look, got demounted by an archer minion and was like, yeah, I'm not so sure it's a good idea anymore. And takes a shot and is now having to run for his life to make sure it doesn't get caught there. But El Nexo not going to give chase. They're going to back up. Let those mercenaries and minions continue pushing dragon that bot fort and get ready for the next Dragon Knight. Bottom Shrine already in their favor. Brightwing, though, is about to get sandwiched between a rock and a hard place, but the speed boost from the Fairy Dust able to That's help level Brightwing 10 escape already, by the way. Level 10 up for El Nexo. Wow. Two level yep. advantage, uh, and that's the heroics for them. So I think uh, they're going to get this next Dragon Knight for sure. Ooh, Cassandra's in trouble again. She needs to play a little bit more cautiously, uh, before level 10 at least. Yep, and the ultimate's pretty much exactly what we'd expect. We have Odin, we have Archon. Link heal from Brightwing. Nick Hotz, it was in the chat earlier, uh, discussing this a bit, uh, discussing this a bit, saying he personally prefers the Emerald Wind style and gets more than enough healing without it. But Army of the Dead on Arthas and Maelstrom on uh, Kerrigan. And there is the second Dragonite of the game for our Nexo, and they're going to start pushing this top lane. Yeah, I have a feeling this is going to be a fast game as well. They're just playing this out so well right now. Oh, Darko Micron in trouble again. There's the grasp and the he's spikes. So low. He's so low. Grumpy KT. He's going for it. He's chasing it. He comes all versus 60. And they can just jump onto him. And down he goes. They're now taking quite a bit of aggro from the towers. The right wing, though, healing so much. And they're just going to be able to smash their way through this wall or, you know, go around it. Whichever one they choose to do. Vortex is also pushing down this bot lane. He will likely take a Grubby. You cannot fight a Tychus on your own. There you go, Grubby being forced back. Vortex continuing to clear this, just help his minions, but now Cassandra is here. Vortex in a bit of trouble. Brightwing teleporting down. Gonna start healing here. Blink it. There goes the Polymorph onto Cassandra. Grubby taking a lot of damage, and he is gonna be killed by Overdrive. Lucifer has arrived as well. Cassandra is being slow. Needs somewhere to kick to, but gets rooted, gets stunned, and taken down. Very oh. nice play there. Ultimates have only just come up for uh, over 9,000. Far too late to save them in that and situation. That, that's the bot lane fort, and the siege camp will also be taken here for El Nexo. And, I mean, that's almost two forts down. This next one in top lane, uh, this is gonna fall pretty soon here as well. Yeah. I think they're gonna set everything up to get all three forts in, in all lanes pretty soon. Yeah, I was quite surprised that top fort did not die there, but yeah. it, is a very, it is a testament to the defense of over 9,000. Alistair going in onto Darko Micron. He's been shrink raid. He is now out of shrink raid. There's the arcade shot. He's so close, Storm. No, no not Micron quite. Able to escape. And Alistair, Ooh. bit of a waste of the Archon there, but able to force Darko Micron away from that fort. And now him and Grand PKT are going to be able to push this down. Uh, Grand PKT going to clear this wave so that they can join and help tank the uh, fort once it comes back up. But in comes Faustet again. Andy Social is here too. 
Look I think Allison needs to watch out since uh, all of these, uh, all of the over K9, uh, over 9k um, teammates were making their way up to top lane. They didn't have any vision anymore, so he needed to watch out a little bit there. And now El Nexo is going for the Ruther camp. And just Vortex and Lucifer clearing that, so we will have a little bit of a stronger push here in mid. Yeah, this is true. We're going to see Bruiser Camps for both teams, though, and ooh, we saw actually Open Affairs back up a bit so that to try, maybe try and draw El Nexo in, because El Nexo loves stealing it so much. But they grab it in the end. That's going to help them uh, push this top lane and help defend a bit. And we're going to see the bottom uh, Bruiser Camps taken as well. Yeah, that's two Bruiser Camps, and I think Bruisers in top lane might actually finish off that Ford all by themselves which does give uh, Alexa the time to take out the towers here in mid lane, get rid of that gate, and possibly push down the mid fort already. They're still three levels ahead. Yeah, and they're able to keep over 9,000 pushed back so much while they're grabbing Bruiser Camps, and now they are over. they're having to split up because they're going for these shrines. And this means that Alistair and Grand Piketty did have to retreat a bit, but both shrines are now in favor of El Nexo. Can they grab the Dragonite? They're pushing back um, over 9,000 right now. Cassandra, bit out of position here. There's the Oracle from Tassadar and he's going for it, but the Holy Radiance does prevent him. In it comes Jen. Jen needs to attack Tassadar to cancel it, but he's going on to Vortex, completely ignoring Tassadar. There's the Shock and Awe onto Lucifer. Lucifer is actually going to get... survive the Ancestral Spirit wow. thanks to his healing. Grabby KT being dropped very low. Lol versus XD also going down, but he pulls them in, stuns Grubby and Darker Micron. And Cassandra also sandwiched finally. between Tychus and Alistair. Oh. And there's Felset going down as well. This is just a slaughter right here. Yeah, that was very, very brutal. I love the tackle kill there by uh, um, by Alistair. And he's now joining his mercenaries in the bot lane to take down these buildings. They're completely ignoring the, the top lane, uh, which is currently pushing in favor of uh, over 9,000. But, well... Yeah, El Nexo do not care, and they're just going to continue pushing down this mid and this bot lane to get as much damage as possible. We're going to see the fort going down. We're going to see the towers for and the gate go down in the bot lane. So Alistair just going to continue trying to keep the team of over 9,000 busy while his team pushes down all of the forts. I'm kind of surprised that they have taken both um, stone skin twice. Maybe to just try to overextend. Well, they, almost, and then... they all almost died there, Tanazibo, who is now dead. There's, the, yes, there's a Divine Storm, but Alistair just tanking through it, stunning both uh, the Cassandra members. caught on the position again. Yeah. She didn't Everyone's have a heroic up. Dying. And Darko Micron also caught in there. And Will go gone, down. And it's just Yellow Flash. Can they get him? Nope, the pull does not hit. Uh, the Overdrive, though, got him a lot of damage done. And the last time this happened, we did see Over 9000 were able to get one kill. This time, they don't appear to be so lucky, taking a lot of damage. Only one of them has survived, though. And continuing to use the multi shot to harass from out of range, but it's not getting much damage done at all. He's just having to clear. Yeah, there's the bribe on the siege camp, so those are gonna wail away at the wall. And cooldown's almost up. I think if this would have been like five minutes later or so, um, El Nexo would have gone for the kill here and it got, gone, gone for the keep. But since the cooldowns are so low, a uh, little bit too risky right there. Yep, this is the case, and right now, over 9,000 desperately trying to just clear anything in their way. And I'd like to point out on Nazi Boat, we are seeing the sprint just for the escape, because it's just so hard to do anything once you're engaged upon at that level. Yeah, Uther, of course, also going for the sprint uh, for the Divine Hurricane oh, set up later on. Gosh. Oh, Yellow Flash! Nope. Robbie is also out of position. Darker Micron being dropped low. Yellow Flash had to back up. Darker Micron does get a shock and awe. Pretty big chase by Uber and Jed. Robbie will go down. There is a Ravenous Spirit trying to do the damage, but Antisocial does get polymorphed, so that will get cancelled out. And the chase is on. Only one person so far has died for over 9,000, so not terrible for them, but they are going to lose a keep for this. They didn't lose the team fight as much, but they're going to lose everything else instead. They just yeah. can't defend it's their just own building more anymore. more of an advantage for uh, El Nexo. And it's just crazy. I mean, look at that Shock and Odd. Just didn't do anything. And that's three levels advantage for you. Shock and Odd just barely tickles them. Yep. 
And then and like someone so, points we'll down around. Lucifer and Vortex are in this team. Enough said. <laughs> yep, Alistair uh, that's true. to take out a tower by just sort of drive by storming it. He's now going to head up to the mid lane and get ready to defend the Dragon Knight because they're getting ready to take it again. Arthas is already on his way up from the bot lane. They already have three members here, now four. And they are ready to they're try to take it They're in an amazing again. spot to take this. Lucifer is moving in. And, and right now, I mean, do. over 9,000, they can't really contest it. They're three levels behind. They're just now getting their level 16 talents. Maybe one more kill. They need those level 16 talents. They have to do it. They need to clear something. There's not that much left here to clear. There are some minions. But their lanes are actually all pushed. There's no minions to kill. There, there we, we go, go level finally. 16s. Uh, of course, combination attack. Holy shark. Blood for blood, specialized specialized uh, toxin combination attack, like you said, and overdrive on Fausta. That is something that Fausta desperately needed. Grubby, back it out there, looking for his opportunity. He needs to try and engage on this while this keep is still alive. That's their best chance of fighting here. But Grubby, having to back up, he can't get a good uh, position here. Oh, there's, there's Vortex cool. just moving in, taking a lot of damage, but Fausta goes and down. Fast. Uther falls. Oh, Antisocial also quite low. Shen goes down. Yellow Flash. Yellow. Will he make it out alive? I don't think so. Dead. Nope. That's the and team that's kill. That's the ace. And that's gonna be game. This is their core to take. Yep. And that's 2-0 for El Nexo. El Nexo. Doing incredible work here. And this does mean that they only have to win one more game to get into the HBL Season 2. By the way, 53,000 healing. Oh um, right wing, 20,000 on Tassadar. 20,000 on Tassadar? Yeah. That healing totem though, good lord. <laughs> Siege damage 109 on Tassadar. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. Wow. <laughs> that was pretty nuts. That um, was pretty to nuts. To be honest, this looks like a 3-0 for El Nexo. Quite possibly. What's the next map? You said you had the order? Cursed, um, right? Next map will be Blackheart's Bane. Ah, okay. Well, El Nexo, we saw them destroy on that last time. Let's see how well they do this time. I need to run use the facilities quickly, so I'll run and do that while they set up the draft. Yep. All right. I'll try to find a lobby for us and try to get the draft link once we have that all set up. So, who do I add? Oh, there we go. Dark Micron. There is no lobby yet. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, StarCraft 1 player switching to StarCraft 2, um, just stomping over everyone. I mean, once you, uh, once we, once you get used to a new game, um, you can kind of tap onto your, your skills that you acquired beforehand, but you have to see if it translates, and I think uh, Heroes is a quite different game, so we'll have to see. I mean, um, I think what's one one big advantage that pro gamers have over us shops, regular gamers, is that they have a really solid understanding of game mechanics and um, like kind of how to like kind of like the Matrix vision, if you if you get what I mean, where they just realize, okay. These talents work out really well with with each other, and they 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 find these little gaps in play. <laughs> I can't wait to see Duck Duck play Lost Vikings, for real. Um, yeah, so last map will be, uh, or possibly last map will be Blackheart's Bay, but I mean, this is El Nex, so they're so good with these map mechanics. It's gonna be incredibly tough, and this was with um, over nine thousand going for the counter picks all the way. Chen um, basically banning Abathur, going for Chen, um, going for Vala. So Chen Vala counter picks, and then Nazebo, who's just a really solid option. This was the perfect team for uh, for over nine thousand. Well, a I'm back. Of... Lobby is up. Nice. Didn't actually check the lobby in between. Yeah. Okay, that's weird. At least one of their players is not in there. Uh, Grubby isn't. Okay. Well, sorry, Grubby's the only one who is in from uh, over 9,000. 
Do you have a draft link? Nope. Okay. <laughs> we'll get into that as soon as possible. Yeah, I just said uh, it's gonna be really tough for over nine uh, nine thousand to make this. Oh, by the way, why this? Why is this map cursed hollow? I thought it was cursed hollow according to the order that you read out. It's haunted mines, Dragonshire, Blackheart's Bay. Yeah. Oh well, I have the draft. Meh. Leave him to it. I don't mind. Oh, he just linked me to the one from last game. Oh no, that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Grubby is calling it out. Wrong map. Blackheart's Bay. Okay. Yeah, he re uh, apparently Vortex read the best of three. <laughs> okay. Oops. All right, so we'll get into that straight away. Yeah, but I'm. I, we're talking about the um, whole StarCraft two players getting into heroes and mobile players getting into heroes and whether or not that advantage uh, from previous games actually helps out here. Um, I think I gotta give it to mobile players because individual skill in Heroes of the Storm is not quite as important, while teamwork, communication is just vital. Yeah, which is why I personally think that Elnek is my personal reason why Elnek so are currently so good. Because Lucifer, because of Lucifer and Vortex. They are brothers. They practice and live together. And they always have in StarCraft 2. They've always helped each other. And they've always... They have that teamwork ingrained into them, basically. Yeah. I'd love to see them play in, in Archon mode. Oh, God, yes. I cannot wait <laughs> for that. That's going to be... Am that's, I'm very excited for that feature. It's going to be cool. It's basically like playing in StarCraft 2, where one of your players leaves the... Where you have basically lost in like a four player game, but your t and one of your teammates leaves. So you and the other person who's lost in a 4v4 teams up to control the person who's still alive and who's left. Yeah. So yeah give me I control, am... give me control. <laughs> yeah. You can't micro, let me do it. Move commands all your units into siege tanks. Yeah, I see the point of uh, the teamwork of MOBA being uh, quite important and very interesting. Yep. This is, this is a MOBA, it's as simple as that. But we have to remember that MOBA, a MOBA was made from StarCraft. Not StarCraft, uh, WarCraft, which is an RTS. No, I think you're, I think you're right. I think the, um, the initial, like, not Defense of the Ancients, but Aeon of Strife. Which Aeon was of Strife was made in the original yeah, StarCraft, This yes. was the precursor to um, Defense of the Ancients. Yeah. It was it was very unpolished, but that was that was very, like, tower defense-y kind of thing. But it was, it was still, like, the first. All right, so I don't have a lobby up yet, and I don't have a draft link either. <laughs> Me neither. Wonderful. Oh, no, I have a lobby. Unless this is in the last lobby. Nope, this is the, this is the right lobby. Join off me. Awesome. So I'll wait for that draft link and then I'll need to run to the bathroom. Okay. And I will start talking through the draft. Once we have it. So this could potentially be the last game and... Could be. And I... If, if you're asking this me... Map, yeah, I... <laughs> As a caster, I am supposed to remain impartial or unbi <laughs> and unbiased. Not going to happen here. <laughs> sorry. But, sorry, I just hit my pop filter there. But I, I like that. I am supposed to be professional, unbiased. <laughs> and then, yes, professional immediately hits his pop filter. Um, but yeah, from what we've seen of El Nexo's play and their style and how they play on this map, I don't think over 9,000 is going to have a good time. Yeah, um, I gotta agree. I mean, they're just so good with the map mechanics. Always on top of things. They have incredibly good map vision, map control. And this is all gonna play into their hands here. Yeah. Okay, well, first for a draft link. Um, haven't got one yet. Did you ask Robbie directly, though? Uh, yeah, I'm about to miss you on Skype. Okay. Yeah, toxicity is always a problem. Um, 
we've had some in the chat today. So yeah, it's a pretty it happens. Yeah, I think the the main problem is like even if you remove chat, um, like your own team is gonna <laughs> is going to um, just pick you apart for some reason or another. And that's why you mute mute people. Yeah. Problem is, uh, what I kind of hate is people that just stick in the game and don't do anything. Yeah, AFKers. There's already yeah. a system in place for booting AFKers. Like, people don't seem to realize this. Like, the people who are BM and AFK and stuff, there is actually already a feature in the game that will ban you. You will lose your account if you do that. Really? Yes. Have you yes. heard of anyone losing their account? Nope. <laughs> Wait, yes. <laughs> yes, I have. Really? Because yes, I heard that the back. okay, because the uh, the whole banning, like only playing with um, only playing with levers and uh, such not uh, whatnot, this will only start with closed beta, right? I don't know, but I know that they have. I know that people have been banned. It might not be for that reason, but I know someone has lost their account. Okay, I have the draft. Ah, oh, you do. Can you send it to me? Yep. Hang on. Copy. And... Paste. Alright. So, oh, so I'm scrolling through the chat and someone is saying that my picture is unprofessional. It's a photo. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> How is the picture unprofessional? It's made in front of the uh, multiplayer uh, poster. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do need a new one. Like the uh, the fact that you said that exactly, it has multiplayer logos on it. I need one in front of just a white background or something for professional reasons. But yeah, it's a unprofessional. Who cares? It's a photograph. I'll be right back. By the way, I did set up the draft though, so yep. you can right, talk, talk about it. the bands, picks, whatnot. Right. We'll be right back. Cool. So El Nexo, starting off with their standard ban at this point, going to be banning stitches. Over 9,000, however, are going to have a bit more... Well, I was going to say having a bit more trouble, but they're going <laughs> for their instincts here, and they're just going to straight away ban Abifer. Abifer has been a fawn in their side for f in the first game. They're just going to remove him from the equation and focus on the troubles they had in the second game and try and work through it. So, you see, uh, right now, I don't think so. Need their first pick, and I expect it will likely be Chen or maybe some kind of assassin. They seem to be very much favoring that. Or Brightwing, as we saw them favoring against uh, Well Met, which will be quite cool. So, uh, yep, there we go, Brightwing. So someone's asking, why do you guys think Dota and LoL are more successful than Hots? Yep, yeah, Hots is alpha. But I honestly don't expect... Uh, Hots to get bigger than them. It doesn't need to be to be successful. Um, Heroes is a new Heroes is a new game. It's in closed technical alpha. Yeah, uh, someone else said that. So sorry, I said that after you said it, but there's a delay on the stream. But uh, it's technical alpha, and the thing is, those two games have such established followings. I doubt Heroes will ever overtake them. But I think it'll get to a point where it is easily successful, and the people who watch it and the people who play it will be able to get what they deserve out of it, because it is an incredible game. So I am looking forward to the years ahead in terms of heroes. It looks good. So we're waiting for over 9,000's first pick. And how long do they have left? I'm going to scroll out so I can see the timer. There we go. All right, so 15 seconds left for them to make a pick, and they're going to go with Tychus. Not too surprising there, and they have their next pick now. And that sounds like Paul will be returning quite soon. And it is Arthas. Not too unusual there from over 9,000. Uh, going for a pretty much standard build. Hello, Paul. And I've joined the fray again. You have indeed. Alright, so I see the same bands again. Abathur and Stitches. And mostly the same picks. Hmm. You know what? I'd like over 9,000 to go for more warriors this time around. Give some more sustain, possibly a chance to stay alive in this game. <laughs> and not be picked apart um, like they did in the previous games. True. 
But this time it's Chen and Valor for El Nexo. That doesn't bode well. Yeah, this is true. They're getting the team they like at the moment. All right, Tassadar from Overdyed Thousand. That's These teams are just looking very, very familiar right now. <laughs> and on this map, uh, I'm just not sure this is risky. Uh, What's the time difference between NA and EU again? Uh, time difference? Yeah, from uh, CET to EST. Uh, Eastern uh, Eastern time is I think five hours or oh, no six hours okay to uh, Central European okay all right someone just asked me to do something in NA time and I was like I have no idea when that is <laughs> I have the draft screen up I can't google it <laughs> all right our next pick is also for our Nexo. And you know what? I think they're gonna go all out, just go all out assassins. I think you might be right. Ufa from over 9000. So, yeah, two more picks from El Nexo. And. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe they'll go for an Azebo. On this map, I'm not too sure. It's nice, but this map is very open. I mean, it's yeah. quite easy to sort of dash in and v dodge Nazebo, as yeah, opposed to true. Cursed Hollow, who we, which we've seen him on, and uh, Dragon Sh and the Haunted Mines. Quite a lot of enclosed spaces with like tight uh, corridors, kind of thing, for people to get caught in and take the maximum amount of damage. I'd like to see Zeratul though. I think Zeratul will be picked. I'm sure he will. And for over 9,000, I'd love to see another warrior. Um, honestly, don't really care all that much who it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, another potential would be Zagara for them. Well, there is a... There's there Zeratul. Yep, as expected. And what's left? Have a like look here. Hammer? If Hammer's not as good on this map, but it'd be cool to see. Um... Excuse me, I had to hiccup there. Hmm, I don't know. Kerrigan again? She um, they played her really nicely in that last map. I'm just looking at the comp from Over 9000. Their comp is one that really likes to fight melee. So I think they'll pick someone else ranged. Mm -hmm. To sort of just keep away from, uh, from Over 9000. I don't know. <laughs> We've been wrong enough times to... Not be surprised, whatever they pick. Hey, Raina. I was right, Raider. Okay, still uh, three assassin composition here for El Nexo. Yep. And Very depending nice on on how um, over nine thousand plays the early game, they might decide to go for a little bit more uh, bulkier Zeratul. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Um, yeah. Sorry. By while you're away, uh, someone starts the chat with. Um, about whether Hots will be better than Lol or Dota. I gave oh, my two geez. cents on it and I started to play more, sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's not really it's not really more, but now literally the chats are literally just what's gonna be better. It's so, it's a different yeah, game. I might have started. I think it caters to a different audience. Yeah, that's what I said. I think I don't think it will ever beat the two of them, yep. Lol and Dota, and I don't think it has to or needs to. Yep. Because I agree it 100%. Get, it's a great game, it will get a following, and the players and people who work with the game will get exactly what they deserve. I gotta agree 100% here. I, I love the game personally just because short rounds, you can play it in the afternoon once you get home from work. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. I play, I play so much of this game, <laughs> as, as is probably quite obvious. And EDC! Yes. Give me a sec though. I think ETC is the default pick if you don't choose anything. Oh, okay. Um, but he might be their correct pick, nevertheless. Uh, I think he would be a good pick. Was that on purpose? <laughs> Vortex, like, uh, is that ETC for real? <laughs> I hope it is. I am a huge fan. For yeah, real, it is. 
All right. Maybe they're just having fun now. Don't blame them. But I am personally a huge fan of EDC. EDC has one of my highest win rates in the game. He is a very good hero. I'm hoping they will play him in a way that demonstrates it. But I think this is the problem. We've seen teams play EDC in the past, but they've always been against teams who have, I would say, possibly a, a higher skill level than them. And then they lose and people are like, okay, ETC is still not good. And this is something that might happen here. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> People are going to watch this and see El Nexo because this is it's a good El Nexo map on a good El Nexo yeah it's team good on a perfect El Nexo good El Nexo team, team comp and they you know what I mean and people are going to watch this and be like oh ETC is still terrible um <laughs> yeah you shouldn't get to that conclusion I think in um in the hands of of a um capable team with good teamwork he can be just incredible. Yeah. ETC will never have the most damage, he'll never have the most healing, but a good ETC will win you the game. Because he is the setup. Mm -hmm. And ETC will find your target and get you that target. It's like a Stitches that never misses a hook. That's the kind of player an ET a good ETC will be, because the Stitches will be like, oh, who do you want to kill? That Kerrigan? She's over here now, get her, good luck. ETC will do the same thing. What do you think about Stage Dive? I don't like it. It's a good ability, but it needs to either be quicker or do more damage. One of the two. Cause I, yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Maybe a little bit more damage, um, or like a three, uh, three second cooldown reduction or something like that. Uh, not cooldown, but uh, casting reduction. Cause it's such a strong like, ability. Maybe not if casting, use the but right travel hand. time. Cause he's in the air for a long time. <laughs> yeah, something takes very long with him. Yeah. Like, what the heck is he doing up here? <laughs> yeah, what are you doing up there, man? I, I, know, I know he has to fly, but gravity, gravity's pretty strong, man. <laughs> Alright, let's get started here with this potentially last match for tonight in the HBL qualifier for Europe. And we have, as the blue team on the left side, El Nexo, they're currently up 2-0. And here we have Alistair on Valor, Lol vs XD playing Zeratul, Grand PKT is playing Brightwing, and Lucifron is on Shen. And final, final person, Vortex on Raynor. And on the right hand side, one game away from having to play again to qualify. <laughs> It is over 9,000 and playing on the ETC with the Master Skin. I have high hopes wow. for this. It is Yellow Flash playing on the Valor. It is Antisocial on the, on the Arthas. It is Grubby on the Tassadar. It is Cassandra. And on the Tychus, it is Darko Micron. Oh, I have high hopes for ETC. So do I. With the Master I have, Skin. I have ETC Master Skin. And this is myself. It's this one of my favorite skins as well. Have a look at that. Zoom in on that. Yeah, this is definitely one of the prettiest skins. Yeah, I am. I had a it looks so incredible, uh, especially after his remake. Yeah, I have a, I will be keeping an eye on his talent, see if he builds it like I do. And if not, and if he plays well, I will steal his build. So right now, <laughs> right now we're seeing both teams trying to gain control to start on the chest. We're seeing El Nexo focusing on this bot chest, and they will grab all the coins straight away and get them. Whereas, uh... We can see over 9,000 actually going to be able to get all the coins from the top lane. Yeah, nice exchange so far. And there we go. Oh, Cassandra. Oh, the engaged. Is moving There's in. a slow, but it's going to phase shift to make sure it can get out alive and safely. EDC roaming down from the top, looking to possibly engage, but does not get a stun. Guess the knockback onto Lol vs XD, though. The brute lands on Vortex. Oh. Lol vs XD taking a lot of damage, and he goes down. Ooh, that's first blood here for over 9,000. Really good job on that route. Yeah, very nice job on the route. It was actually the player who wasn't rooted. It was just Zeratul who just started decided to stop and yeah, but he fight. body blocked his uh, his own teammate. Oh then. wow, that is awesome. I love that. So uh, meanwhile in the bot lane, Darko Micron is having is suffering the problem of playing against a Chen. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about to get oh, oh this is actually kind of dangerous. Yeah, that's not good. Darko Micron uh, is, uh, appears with DC. Let's see if Lucifer is gonna be. Um, the better player here. I'm assuming and he'll be. Yeah, look at him. He's he's backed up. He's being mana. Yeah, this is incredibly matter. Um, oh meta my right god, now. what is what is happening up here in the boss area? There's no boss alive yet. Why is there a fight? Vortex is gonna go down to Yellow Flash. Grubby is now chasing onto Lord vs. 60. Lord vs. 60 gets stunned and he's taken down as well. 
Over 9,000! Wow. This ETC! Guys, please! And he's so far building my the exact build I do. I'll still be keeping an eye on that. Going for block to start off with. ETC's level 1 talents are rubbish. And going for the pawn chop guitar to reduce the mana, the mana cost for the guitar solo, which is his heal ability. Gonna give him a huge amount of sustain. Uh, interesting. Okay. Um, by the way, Tychus is not back yet. Yeah, he's still a bot. No one has pinged him yet, so I don't know if he's actually following anyone either. I don't think he is. It's actually a nice thing. Um, if if you click on him, um, he's gonna follow you. So. Yeah. If you pi if you ping Tychus, it will say Tychus bot is now following. Blah blah blah. Well, Tychus has decided that the top lane is now where he wants to be. It is the in spot, <laughs> and is going to help. This uh, kind of forces a rotation out of Uther, and it looks like Arf is also joining down in bot lane. But we do have the bruises in top lane, and a um, little bit of an XP advantage for over 9,000. Yep, Not too much, though. Has, has moved down to the bot lane. He will be soaking the XP while Tychus decides to go off on his mission. Now, here, I think uh, ETC did ping Tychus, because he does appear to be following him. Yep. Tychus not smart enough. Tychus bot, however, not smart enough to realize that now would be a great time to mount up. Well, that's the bot for you. Yeah. And that's level 7 for over 9,000. They also go for the siege camp in bot lane. Still so. three kills to zero. Yellow Flash is DC'd now. Uh, Cassandra is DC. Antisocial. Okay. I think everyone left the game. Except uh, Grubby. Oh, no, Grubby left. <laughs> okay. Uh, What's well, the last player leaves? Uh, I think that's it. Uh, I don't know if they're um, going for a Rego. I'm hoping they'll go for a Rego because. Well, quite frankly, over 9,000 are winning. Well, it's the early game. Can't really tell yet. It is, it is the early game, but I'm assuming they can't. They have to at this point. Well, the game is... Uh, I'm assuming that means that uh, their Tychus could not reconnect. So hmm. we... that We're going to go... We'll have to see. I'm assuming this will be... A, this should 100% be a regame. So we will get into this back into this as soon as possible. Yeah, we'll have to see. I mean... Depends on what the rules state. Um, what does it say about uh, disconnect rulebook? I'll ask the admins at the same time. Yep. Uh, where are we, by the way? Okay, let me check it out. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. I haven't had a message. For okay, Grubby's back in the lobby, so I'm just going to join off Grubby. Most of the players appear to be in this lobby, so I mean, I think they're okay. So okay, if you want to join good. off me. If the I think if the, if the other team decides that it's okay, as they appear to have done, because <laughs> they're in this lobby and I haven't heard a single complaint. I think they're good. I think yeah, I think if, if both teams agree, it's definitely yeah, a goal. Excellent. Proper yeah. sport. Very sporting there. Remember, guys, hashtag alpha. <laughs> that is true. But really, really good sportsmanship like here. I like the fact um, that someone said, wow, DC and proceed. Have you seen the league? There is a highlight video by a guy called... Uh... Oh my god, I cannot remember who it's called. It's one of my favorite channels uh, for League stuff. I will find this while they're loading up the game. But there is a channel that's purely... that has a montage of all the times that LCS has gone wrong with players disconnecting and stuff. Oh well, it happens. Yeah, happens in every game. Even on LAN, apparently. Yep, alright, so admin says remake as well. So we're all good. <laughs> Apparently his PC couldn't afford so much rock. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping oh. that that means I'm hoping that this isn't going to affect it because we have to be honest, they were winning. It was early game, but that was an incredible start, and I hope they can sort it again. Dionard, that's the one. Dionard is the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, that that was incredibly. Um Incredibly nice by, uh, I think, Lucifron, that he didn't take out Tychus. Yeah, you, uh, it was Chen, so Lucifron, yeah, Lucifron. yes. Alright, so, let's, let's get back into this. And we are getting back into game number three of this Best of Five series. 
end. Hopefully it's going to be just as good as the start of that last game. We did see over 9,000 taking a slight lead last time. Let's see if they can repeat the performance and start their comeback. <laughs> start the comeback. Um, and they'd have to win uh, three games in a row now if they want to make this happen. It's no tough feat, uh, no small feat. Reverse but sweep. Yeah. Pretty incredible, and that's against uh, probably the strongest teams in Europe right now, uh, which is El Nexo, which are spawned here on the left side as the blue team. And we have Vortex on Raynor. Lucifron playing Chen. Alistair playing Vala. Grand PKT is playing Brightwing. And finally, LOL vs XD on Zeratul. And on the right hand side, it is over 9,000 in the red trunks. And on Tassadar, we have Cassandra. Darko Micron is on the Tychus. Grubby is on the Arthas. Antisocial is on the, the. Is that a Vala? No, Antisocial is on the Ufa. And Yellow Flash is on the ETC. And we emphasize it is a Master Skin ETC. You can't get more metal than that. And he's getting ready to go in. And we have seen over 9,000 once again take the, the Watchtower. El Nexo, don't really put much value in that Watchtower. Yeah, but at least they tried something differently this time. Not going for the bot lane straight away, so they're changing things up, possibly because of that uh, early game uh, in the previous match. Yep, oh my god, Vortex already engaged upon. There's the knockback, but they can't stun him. Knockback from Vortex as well, helping save himself, and that does keep him alive. Just gonna bring up the level 1 talents screen again, so we can see what is going on. ETC has moved up to this top lane. And he will be able to sustain up here for a while and just soak up the XP. Grubby also coming in, just going to help clear the wave. And then they'll move down just to contest that chest. Yeah, last time we had uh, over 9,000 going for the top chest, getting all the coins. This is not going to happen. Uh, Vortex already grabbed one. They are and... going for the... They will get the rest of the coins, though, and take that down very quickly. Whereas at the bottom lane, we are seeing El Nexo take all of the coins. Yeah, so nice one coin advantage to them. Actually, two coins, right? Because they stole one. Yep, this is true. So tiny bit of a coin advantage. Lucifron, once again, this this is familiar. <laughs> Lucifron just tanking tigers again. Only this time appears to be having a lot more difficulty with it. Is able to kick over the grenade to wow. dodge it and run out of range with Darko of Micro. And he's in trouble. So much Micro. He's out of position. In comes Lucifron. There's the kick, and he goes down. So well wow. played by Lucifron there. That is why um, he is considered one of the best players in this game. Grand PKT, however, is having a bit more trouble. He's able to polymorph Yellow Flash though to get him out of there. And all this range attacking from a. Uh, from El Nexo, is all that's keeping them alive. They're trying to just poke from afar here. But yeah, they're, they're playing this a little bit damage. differently. Um, just staying back a little bit more, kind of trying to bait them out, and just uh, stay in lanes for XP as good as they can. And it's working out quite well. Yep, this is true. Uh, this is true. Right now, Antisocial trying to clear the wave because, with the help of the Inspire, Vortex is actually doing a very good job of pushing this lane up. Um. Black, uh, Blackheart has just spawned. Yep, he's just going to chill here, wait for people to get coins. And once again, this, happen, uh, this happens a lot in games against El Nexo. We see a team take their Bruiser Camp quite a bit earlier than El Nexo do. Yep, they are going for their, uh, their Bruiser Camp now as well, though. Lol is actually dying, but yeah. <laughs> he has enough time to be back. It's fine. We've only once in one tournament seen a player die to a Mercenary Camp. It was well, hilarious. Happens. I it happens. I can't remember who it was. It happens. Everyone makes a mistake. I think it was just. I think it was the stitches. That's all. I, that's all I really remember about it. Usually, it happens when you get surprised by another player, but yeah, but every no, once in a while, just against the mercenary, just on its <laughs> own. Oh, Lucifron taking a bit of damage now. He's once again microing against Darko Micron, and it's just getting so much harass damage. But there are now some mercenaries here. It's going to make this a bit more difficult for him, and he's out. <laughs> And Darko Micron pushing this back, also has the Seed Shines in the back, doing a little bit more damage. And this could be a nice push, but he's also down to half health, so uh, he does have the cooldown. Uh, does have no cooldown, so that's nice. El Nexo starting a little bit ahead this time, as opposed to last game, where we did see over 9,000 doing a good job. Uh, oh, Grand PKT thinking. is in trouble. Oh, he's trapped in the corner. He Can is he? so... He, he's trying to teleport out. Stun him. No, no he's stun. Gone. 
Wow, that was pretty incredible. No, nice save here by Grab PKT. Yeah, very, very nice. Well played there. And now they are going in. The fight continues. Grubby is taking a lot of damage here, but he's being healed and shielded. Alistair gets locked down in the route, but they don't really have much damage. The Yellow Flash is currently fighting LOL versus XD, but with Grand PKT here, he's in trouble. He needs to dash out, but he dies anyway. Drops all his coins. Antisocial is going to join him if he's not careful. Down oh, yeah. he goes. Valor and Raider together, so much rage damage, and Grubby's actually stopped from being by the multi shot. Yeah, incredibly, uh, incredible body blocking by LOL versus XD there as well. Yeah, yeah managed to get at least, um, yeah, step on top of the player and really, really um, zone her out. This is a very much the case. Lolva 60 heading to this bot lane just to start, get, just to get this chest, get a team further ahead. The first turn it did go to well Nexo. And they oh, are. Oh, Vortex is in trouble. Tries to oh, heal himself. Oh, nope. Oh, Grab yes, the heal comes up right from wow. there. Comes the, uh, there comes the Raid of Vengeance. Anti-Social and Cassandra having to back up. Grubby's also in a tough position. In comes Yellow Flash, though, not to engage, but to disengage, not to stun the enemy team and try and protect his team. Anti-Social, though, it's not going to matter. He goes down anyway. Yellow Flash doing a good job, but he can't seem to help his team. It can't seem to help his team here. That was a good disengage, but it just wasn't Incredible enough. timing here by Grand PKT to jump in there, uh, we, get the heal yeah. in. And wow, Arthur's even going down that exchange. Uh, have a look at Zeratul, how many coins he has. Are you kidding me? 22. He killed, he killed Arthas, and Arthas had quite a few of those, but that's a <laughs> lot of coins. And he was about to go down. He was. He was very, very low. But right now, we can see another barrage coming out from El Nexo. They are taking a huge advantage in this early game. And there's one thing we should probably mention, because it's the most unusual thing we've seen so far. None of the talents we are seeing on ETC. Pawnshop Guitar, Guitar Hero, and Block. Yep, we've already so, discussed Block, it being one of the best options in the lower levels. Docker Micron also just escaping from being murdered again in the bot lane. Yeah, oh! It uses med pack, and can he get away? Oh, Antisocial is trapped in there. But he's, he's close to the fort, and... Just to delay them. Darker Micron came back in, but Antisocial is literally just trying to bait them in to take damage from the core, and he d but not enough, he does go dead. Does go down to lose it on Yellow Flash. Uh, is they're now almost up to level 10. If they get that level 10 talents, they might actually win this fight. But no, it's four against three. Darko Micron is in trouble. There comes the Polymorph. There's the Bosch bit. Get off wow. the Embers. The Odin doing so much damage. Down goes Valor. We're going to see Raider healing up with his passive. Can he? Can they pick him off? There's the Void Prism. And we're going to see over 9,000 try and run into that just to try and survive. But that Bosch bit was incredible. They were not able to get everyone there. But that was a huge fight, and still not enough to save the fort. That was incredible. I mean, that was such a clutch timing here. They reached level 10 the moment that fight just uh, burst out into full force, and immediately popping into the Odin, going for the Marsh Pit, and then Void Prism really saved the day here for LX, so otherwise uh, I think they might have faced uh, some serious doom there. Yep, I would agree. I'm. They probably would have all died, but ETC, with that mosh pit doing so much, but it just wasn't enough. If they can survive and keep this up, El Nexo on this map are incredible, but like we've seen multiple times, if they get hit with the right team comp in a team fight, they're not invincible. They will go down, but it's just getting that team fight is going to be so difficult, especially on this map for over 9,000. Yeah, they haven't managed to actually get a single barrage in yet. They lost so many coins uh, on that uh, Arthas kill. That's that's a danger you run into. If you have your uh, tank grab all the coins, or just anyone grab all the coins, it's just way too dangerous. Oh, yellow Ooh, flash caught out of position. Where's the polymorph? That will be coming any second now. No, yellow flash able to get away. It's only uh, at level 13. Yellow flash will be getting an increase. To, oh no wait, the increase to his heal is on level 16, never mind. He gets a movement speed bonus on level 30, but here we go, here's the fight. Yellow Flash is in here, he's doing so, he's trying to disrupt as much as possible. They're going onto Vortex now, trying to take him down, and Yellow Flash just heals so much with the help of Ufa here, and we're seeing El Nexo on the retreat. And they're trying to move around to get Alistair, who is fleeing for his life. We've taken the increased knock, the slow on the knockback on Ye uh, Yellow Flash has, and Grubby 
Running away, gets rooted, and Grubby gets picked off. A yellow flash coming in, gets the mosh bit onto two, but gets knocked back by Raider. Very nice shot there by Vortex, cancel basically cancelling out that mosh bit. Vortex gets the damage onto Tykers, and they get Ufa. Cassandra will follow, and El Nexo gets the ace. Oh, nice, nice turnaround. And Lucifron not even going for his heroic there. He still had the Stormer from Fire available the entire time, I think. Yeah, he hasn't even had to use it this game yet. <laughs> this, this is pretty nuts. I mean, he should have popped it earlier. They could have avoided the kill on, on Brightwing, at least. Maybe, but... But, just... but still, I mean, that's their fourth... I think their fourth payup now. Uh, 10, 12, 16. Yeah, this will be a fourth. And one fort is already gone. Uh, two forts are gone, and three forts are gone. That's, uh, that should possibly uh, almost get a keep at least. Uh, it will start on the keep. It will go. Seeing as the fountain's gone, actually, it might. They, they killed uh, the last one. He killed the fountain. It's going for the tower first, though, leaving that for that keep alone a bit. Uh, that's six uh, six shots, I think. Six, six think shots killed. Enough. I think it leaves it at a sliver. I'm not sure. In the meantime, though, people are dying in the top lane. Yep, uh, Raina was taken out. Wow, Valor was taken out. Nice job here with the Divine Storm by Uther. And they caught a little bit of a break. We'll get that stop for it. Yep, and uh, like I said, the key survives ever so barely, but it does survive. <laughs> and we're going to see... This is now an incredibly difficult hill for over 9,000 to climb. They're basically yeah, at least they got the fort out of it. Uh, yep, catching up in right. XP a little bit. Once they get that level 16, they can still um, get into the next team fight. But they, sh they need to watch out. There are Bruisers and Sea Giants on the bot lane. And El Nexo moving towards their bot lane as well. There comes the bribe on the siege camp. That's a mighty strong bot lane. Yeah, that bot lane is pretty strong, although one of the Siege Giants appears to be having issues with working out which way is forwards. There we go. <laughs> that will now continue. And we're going to see El Nexo going for another turn in. They have 18 coins on Lulva, 60 and Lutefron. And that is going to be devastating. Yellow Flash gets caught out a bit, but with Block, is able to just tank through it and run away. Nope. <laughs> he gets interrupted from mounting, though. Having a bit of difficulty there. But... We're seeing El Nexo getting ready to move into this top lane and try and get another keep for this. They were not able to take down the tower though before the shots were used up, which is unfortunate for them. And they're looking for their, looking for their moment. Oh, uh, they're doing a little bit of damage. They need a little bit more. I think this is going to be enough. This is going to be a keep for them. Yep, that will. And they're be backing off. They're backing shots. off. Why is this so? And there comes the Void Prison. Nice engaged. Anti-social will go down here. And Yellow Flash also in a little bit of trouble at least. But Grubby comes back in there. There's the Divine Storm. Alistair is caught out of position. But he popped his heroic as well. And will go down though. Yep, Alistair the only person caught in that mosh pit. But that means there's not that much CC left for uh, over 9,000 here. And it's only three members left. And one or two of them are tanks. Grubby desperately trying to heal himself. Yellow Flash needs to go help Grubby here or at least do something to try and keep them alive. They need to save any members they can, but Grubby goes down, and Yellow Flash is now trying to keep uh, Darker Minion alive. Uh, Darker Micro, sorry. Darker Micro getting engaged to put a fight, and he goes down to the bright wing. It's now just Yellow Flash versus the entirety of El Nexo wow. minus Valor, but he goes down as well, and another ace for El Nexo. That's the next team kill, and uh, kind of surprising that they're not going for uh, the final keep, but I mean, cooldowns, only 15 seconds on Arthas, and once Arthas is back, uh, it's already not that easy uh, for them to stick around. Also quite low in the health department. Yeah, this is true. So we're going to see El Nexo playing it safe. They're going to back up, grab their mercenaries. The boss literally just came up. They will be stealing that, and there is nothing that over 9,000 can do about it. By the way, over 9,000 wisely going for the thrones, uh, stone skin on uh, Arthas, on Rain, uh, on Tychus, and on ETC. So triple stone skin for them. Uh, we have uh, Executioner on Valor and Berserk on Rainer. Executioner, good choice. We've been over this. Why is so nice with the help of Froshaw and, in fact, Rainer's knockback will be pretty good here. Any CC is going to be super helpful, and we're going to see El Nexo. Begin moving in. ETC is quite far forward. Oh, El Nexo, they're... Wow, they are incredibly, incredibly 
uh, ballsy right here. Yeah. Going for the steal on the siege camp. Oh, yellow flash is in trouble. Oh. There we go, taken out. Everyone else porting back, of course, need to deal with the boss, and I think this is going to be the time for Alexa to make a move. Yeah, go for the pushing finishing blow. With, yeah, they will push in with this. In fact, they have all pushed in with this. They are, they oh, are the nice Void Prison! Void prison. The most of, uh, that was the way we were most of their Almost everyone. They're just going to ignore them again. They're just going for the call, going to ignore the enemy team. The Golem is still over. It's still a half health. Down goes Ufer. He still has Divide Storm, I think. No, he's just going to dance. <laughs> 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 yeah, over 9,000 know it. And, and that's that the 3-0! 3-0 for El Nexo, GG indeed. And with that, El Nexo qualifies for Season 2 of the Heroes Premier League alongside uh, Team AAA, the French team. So, French and Spanish gamers rejoice. We have El Yay, Nexo. mainland Europe. Yeah, <laughs> El Nexo job. and El Gans uh, all against authority advancing here in the Heroes Premier League. Yeah, and um, this was the first qualifier for... Uh, the European Heroes Premier League. Very much so. And remember, just because you lost this one does not mean that you cannot enter the next one. So if those of you who were really looking forward to maybe seeing some grubby in the next HBL, there's still three more opportunities for you to get your wish.